So good morning, everyone. Today we are again having a beautiful talk with uh, Mr. Vishwaji, Vishwajit Das Gupta. I would like to say a few things about uh, Vishwajit Das Gupta, what he is. So Vishwajit Gupta is a partner at JRC Corporate Cons Consultancy Strategic Advisor at ASAS Capital and Senior Advisor at Arthur De Little. He is based in Dubai. In this role, he guides businesses and financial institutions on business and investment strategies. Until October 2020, he was Chief Investment Officer and Head of Global Markets at Ameret Investment Bank. During the seven years that he spent there, Biswajit was responsible for management of banks, proprietary investment and portfolio, which covered a wide range of asset classes and geographies at and also led the brand's treasury trading and product development. Prior to this, Viswajit spent five years as executive director treasury at Abu Dhabi Investment Company, where he was responsible for firms, treasury training and proprietary investment. From 2002 to 2009, he was part of founding management team of two banks, Dubai Bank in UAE and Khaliji in Al Khaliji in Qatar. So business area that he laid the foundation of and subsequently done, including treasury, institutional banking, corporate banking, investment sales, debt, capital market, and Islamic mark, mark, banking. Prior to that, he spent 10 years with Ambro, ABN Ambro Bank. Then he started in credit department and slowly he was responsible for many, many more assignments as Treasurer Kenya, country treasurer Kenya. He is a speaker at several high profile international and regional conferences and a regular contributor to print and electronic media. He is deeply committed to India and keen to help the country take control of narrative about how its culture and values are designed to enhance global well being in myriad ways. Biswajit is a CA from India and a Bachelor of Commerce from Shriram College of Commerce. And he also holds certification in FinTech from Harvard University and Financial Market from ACI FMA. So I am, we are really grateful for you to uh, have you here as a, a speaker and share your views and your views on uh, status of women in Indian culture. So over to Mr. Vishwajit Das Gupta. So welcome, sir. Thank you. Uh, maybe useful to start with uh, uh, why I decided to speak on something that on the surface appears to be uh, not related to my area of specialization. So, uh, I'm not, as you can, as, as you just mentioned, uh, I've spent most of my professional career in yes. banking and finance. Uh, so for somebody like that to talk about the role of women feels a little bit odd. So maybe it's useful to clarify that. Uh, you know, over, I mean, I've had the good fortune of uh, uh, traveling widely, right? Uh, and of course, uh, uh, like many people, I like to read and I like to keep myself abreast of what's going on in the world and so on. Uh, and I'm constantly frustrated by the narrative about India and Indian women in particular uh, in in the sort of mainstream media. Uh, and I, I mean, as a, I'm, I'm, I'm a very proud Indian, okay. Uh, uh, and I, I really uh, uh, feel that the role of Indian India in general and Indian women uh, has been so widely misunderstood and misconstrued that uh, somebody needs to take uh, charge of the narrative and talk about it. Hence, uh, uh, you know, we are having this conversation here. What is the status of women in Indian society and culture as per your uh, knowledge? Okay. So, so you know, let's let's start. Uh, I'd like to say right at the beginning, okay? uh, uh, our our uh, our uh, culture, uh, where we where we are uh, sort of rooted, 
uh, we have this concept of Adya Shakti, right? The primal energy from which everything evolves. That Shakti is female, right? We know that Shakti in many forms, uh, in, in sort of uh, common Indian uh, uh, culture and understanding that Adya Shakti is depicted as Durga, she is depicted as Lakshmi, she is depicted as Saraswati. So different aspects of uh, of uh, uh, the, the primal energy are understood and accepted uh, by different people in different stages of life, in different uh, uh, locations, and so on. The same Adya Shakti is uh, is uh, you know depicted as Vinakshi Ambal in the south, Vinakshi in the north, Chakdamba, all sorts of different manifestations of the same Shakti. Right? This is this is something that. To the best of my knowledge, no other culture uh, has at its core of recognizing the female as the primal energy, right? You, you, you know, go forward. What do we call our country? We call our country Matrubhumi. Matrubhumi. There are countries in this world which call their homeland fatherland, right? Uh, we, we, we have, uh, you know, uh, the saying of Janami Janma Bhumi Sargad Bhikariyasi. That our Janma Bhumi is our mother. It is bigger than the heavens, right? Uh, we our our so our national song is Vande Mataram, right? Uh, we have all heard about uh, you know this Atithi uh, Devo Bhava, but I think many people don't know that this is an excerpt from the Taitiri Upanishad, and the first part of that of that shloka. Is Matri Devo Bhava, then Pitri Devo Bhava, then Acharya Devo Bhava, then Aditi Devo Bhava. Right? Uh, this is the culture we are from. Right? We we call, uh, uh, I mean, even in, you know, in, in Bollywood, uh, uh, you know, the, the, one of the greatest movies of all time is Mother India. Right? Our songs are Ma Teri Surat Sehla Bhagwan Ke Surat Kya Hogi. This is the culture we are from. Right, this is how we have respected uh, women. Right, uh, we've had uh, you know uh, we we say Radesham, we say is Jaisya Ram. Right, everywhere there is always the recognition of the female principle as as uh, an integral part of society, uh, and yet somehow there is this 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 sort of misconception that uh, you know we look down upon women, we you know, respect them. You know, so so I think this just comes from a lack of understanding and lack of you know willingness to really understand how the culture came about. Yes. So uh, you are uh, talking about ancient India, like uh, uh, people, the ladies, the status of women in ancient India. Now, what do you say about Indian women now? how they are impacting our life. Because now what I feel Indian women are coming up, but there are certain strata of uh, uh, people or uh, uh, levels where Indian women are not uh, taken as a, as a higher status. They are still treated as at lower level. So what do you have to say about that? Okay, so let's, let's look at a little bit of, uh, of uh, let's say not so ancient history. Okay, uh, we've had uh, political leaders who were female, uh, whether it is Ahalya Bhai Holkar, Rani Fasi, right, uh, or Kutu Chalamma. We've had uh, so we've had political leaders who have uh, not just ruled well, but who have displayed valor and bravery uh, that have become the stuff of legend. We've still talked about. We've had philosophers. Right of like like Gargi and Lopa Mudra in ancient literature, but also relatively modern literature. You know, I don't know. Um, so Adi Shankar, for instance, uh, there is this story about. Let me. This is, actually, this is a good one. Maybe I'll tell you the story about. You know, there was a. Uh, you, of course, you, we all know Adi Shankar, right? So Adi Shankar uh, actually got into a debate with uh, another learned scholar called Mandan Mishra. Right about the uh, uh, about Brahmagya, about Brahman, right? And uh, and both had their perspective, so they got into a debate, 
and guess who was appointed as the judge of that debate it was mandan mishra's wife okay they got into the debate she acted as the judge of this debate between two of the most learned scholars of that time in that debate her husband lost she accepted that her husband has lost another another uh, uh, you know expression of how a knowledgeable and b objective and impartial uh, uh, she was able to be and because then the, the part of the agreement was that whoever loses will will adopt uh, full sanyas she along with her husband went on to take sanyas right so just to give you a sense of the sort of respect in which you know women in ancient india or even medieval india were looked up to we have had uh, spiritual gurus we've had people like mukta bai we've got people like sejo bai we've got people like lalleshwari devi we've had people like akka mahadevi people who have mira bai we have who have composed uh, uh, beautiful pieces of of uh, of uh, you know uh, divine poetry of of divine literature who have been accepted and acknowledged as realized beings as sages right uh, we've had uh, uh, you know so so that's maybe a few hundred years ago roll forward uh, our first women graduate was in the 1860s 1860s right our first doctor kadambani ganguly andewai joshi uh, became doctor as in 1880 which is 200 20 years or less than 20 years after the first woman graduate in the world yes we've had we've had uh, uh, you know uh, uh, people who uh, 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 have gone on to uh, uh, be be uh, scientists doctors so i'll come to that so let's say so um, you know in the context of let's say independence india let's start from there okay uh if you look at and i'm giving other countries example as 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 example only so uh, women uh, got the right to vote in the us in the 1920s right uh, which is 150 years after the us became independent right 1776 is when the us war of independence was fought in, uh, uh, in the uk women were allowed to vote also in the 1920s Okay. Yes. In Switzerland, women were allowed to vote in 1971. Okay. In most of Europe, women were allowed to vote in the 19 between the 1920s and 1940s. Okay. Keep in mind that these were independent countries, not ruled by anybody, so they had the freedom to choose their own constitution, their own way of governance, and so on. Right. When did India uh, become independent? 1947 when was the day indian women got the right to vote 1947 okay when was the first uh, uh, minister uh, uh, the union minister uh, uh, appointed uh, that was female 1947 rajkumari ambedkar right when was who was the first indian ambassador to the united states uh, to the to, to russia Vijay Lakshmi Pandit. She also went on, of course, to become the the ambassador to to the, to the US. Right. Uh, in 1966, Indira Gandhi became one of the first female leaders of heads of state in the world. She, of course, also went on to you know lead the country uh, over over a war uh, uh, that was that was widely hailed as one of the greatest successes uh, of her generation. Right. When did the UK get their first prime minister that was female in the 1980s? Right, the US has still not got a woman prime minister or a woman head of state. Right, Germany got its first head of state in 2005. Right, so uh, when was our first woman chief minister? Sujata Krepulani in 1963. Right, we've had two women presidents. We've had one. Uh, 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 female prime minister very successful. We've had a female head of uh, the opposition. We've had multiple chief ministers. We've had multiple union ministers. 
we've had the head of the largest private sector bank in the country was a woman. The head of the largest public sector bank was a woman. The head of the National Stock Exchange has been a woman. The head of the Securities Exchange Board is a woman. We've had, uh, you know, billionaire entrepreneurs starting from Kiran Majumdar Shaw a long time ago to, to Halguni Nayak now. What's her name? Yeah, Hal Nayak now. Uh, uh, we've had uh, scientists, people like Tessie Thomas, who are called the Missile Woman of India, right? We have, uh, you know, uh, uh, sports women, whether it is P.T. Usha uh, long ago to, to P.V.S. Sandhu now, Mitali Raj, uh, you know, Gita Bhagat. Um, it, it, it's such a long list that it's almost impossible to you know remember, right? Uh, we have uh, 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 scientists at ISRO who who set the record for the largest number of satellites that was launched. They should be the, the rocket woman of India, right? Uh, we have the largest number of, uh, of commercial pilots in the world who are female. We have the largest number of STEM graduates in the world who are female. Right. So this, I mean, I don't know where this 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 sort of idea comes that that uh, that you know somehow Indian women are uh, are suppressed or incapable or not able to you know uh, uh, progress in the world. Uh, I mean, it, it just boggles the mind. Yeah. Uh, here I would say one thing that these are the women who really went uh, against their. Uh, uh, education against their society against their parents some of them of course but uh, there are still these are the few i would say 25 percent of women who came up what about the 75 percent of the women who are still struggling who are struggling for basic education also there are child women girl child who are not getting uh, education basic education also still we are way uh, behind the uh, uh, growth uh, sector, these are the, what you have said that there are women at the top level or at the sport in all the areas of, uh, um, uh, all the areas of uh, growth, but there are women, there are girls who are still struggling for basic education, basic amenities, basic uh, things that they need. What about them? What do you say about them? So what was the rate of female literacy when we uh, became independent? 9%. What do you think is the rate of female literacy now? 92%. Okay. In 75 years, we had, and this is when uh, uh, for, for 200 years, we were you know, subjected to whatever we were subjected to. I don't want to go into that. Maybe you know, the subject of another discussion. Uh, but that is the progress that we have made in 75 years. And so, you know, uh, the, the direction is, the, uh, when I just look around myself, okay, uh, uh, yeah. and I'm, I'm certainly not from a privileged background. I'm just a regular middle class uh, chap who went to school and, you know, uh, uh, and did whatever. But uh, my wife is a clinical psychologist and a fitness expert, right? Yeah. I have two nieces, right? One of whom is a PhD, uh, and 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 she's a, a an educator, right? The other niece is an IT expert and based uh, based overseas, right? My niece's daughter uh, is is uh, very uh, good at study, she, uh, but on top of that, uh, I mean she she writes poetry and things like that that get published in newspaper. She's a brown belt in karate. One of my closest friends uh, is a banker who manages uh, really, really complex projects. Another very close friend is an author and, and, and runs her own business, right? Uh, I, I, another friend, uh, more than one friend actually, who, ha who, who uh, uh, run restaurant businesses. Uh, another friend who is an international artist, the list, a doctor, uh, uh, the list goes on, right? So. I'm not suggesting we have reached the end, but which country has? Right? Uh, given where we started from, I think we have made tremendous progress. Yes, I agree with that. But uh, this is the middle class area, middle, middle class and higher class. 
but there are lower class and below the uh, poverty line people who are still struggling you know their parents say no you sit at home and uh, uh, you take care of the family there are uh, these people who are not able to come out and there are some communities also they don't let the girl child grow what do you have to say about them yeah these are all true i think i think these are these are these are good questions so there are so let's say let's split it up into two parts okay i think uh, one is do other countries have similar problems uh, yes or no and and if yes then is it fair to single india out as this this you know this exceptionally bad country that somehow treats women badly uh, that's question one question two is do these problems exist and do we need to you know uh, do something to fix them i think the answer to the second question is obvious absolutely we have to i mean this is a journey we are we are uh, we have made a lot of progress uh, given where we started from uh, does there uh, need to be more work done absolutely absolutely now I, I, and again so we need to understand this right so there are so uh, you know when you say that uh, women are deprived uh, some girls are deprived from from you know uh, education and all that yes uh, that's absolutely true uh, and, and of course the, uh, uh, there have steps been taken uh, by multiple governments to improve that there has been progress but it is not enough uh, and it is a combination of factors right uh, the biggest uh, uh, aspect of this is economic uh, somehow there is this uh, there is this uh, uh, sort of lingering i would say uh, uh, impression that uh, uh, women are an economic liability almost right uh, because of course you know she will you know go off uh, uh, to another house and of course whatever contribution she uh, after marriage and therefore whatever you know uh, you you sort of uh, 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 contribute towards the development essentially benefits another household if that uh, and then therefore what is the point of investing in 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 uh, uh, in her literally uh, and you can understand that from the perspective of somebody who is economically uh, very deprived and under a lot of uh, you know pressure and so on i i understand that and really what is the way out the only way out is for these girls to sort of push themselves up by the bootstrap literally which they are doing actually and for the rest of society like all of us who you know been fortunate enough to you know uh, uh, benefit from uh, you know economic development uh, that has happened worldwide is to provide the environment provide the support provide the sort of guardrails that allow this to happen right so it has to be a combination of two you cannot uh, only provide the the facilities and the i mean there is this old saying right you know you can take the horse to the water but you can't make it drink so you can provide the schools you can provide the you know the meals you can provide uh, the economic opportunities you can do all of that at the same time it is up to the people who are affected the most in this case the women who have to kind of make that effort from their side to make sure that they are able to benefit from this and i'm not suggesting this is an easy one okay i'm not suggesting that you can expect a 5 year old girl to make her own decisions no of course not i'm i'm not uh, suggesting that uh, so there is there a social responsibility absolutely is there a government responsibility absolutely uh, it all has to come together We, I mean, there is really no other way, and, and, and I would like to to say, as I as I've been saying uh, for a while, that we are moving in that direction. Uh, of course, we feel frustrated that it is not moving as as fast uh, as we would like it to. But keep in mind two things, right? One is we are trying to undo damage that has been done over hundreds of years, right? to expect that damage to get rectified in you know 5 10 15 20 years is a little bit unrealistic one two you are dealing with a population of 1.4 billion people so almost 20% of the world's population and it is very diverse in every way right 
to bring them to a common narrative and get them to move together is a herculean task we are getting there i think uh, uh, we are making a lot of progress uh, but yeah i mean it's it's just something that that takes time i mean you you, know, you can't undo 2 300 years of damage in 20 years yeah i agree with you because uh, things are changing and yes uh, around me if i would say around me yes uh, society around me are changing but there are still child marriages there are still uh, forced uh, confinement of the children like i know about one of my uh, daughter's friend who is dentist and she is under the guards till she get married so she is not allowed to go out and socialize so it is still there and it is uh, like good family middle class family still they are guarding the child and uh, not letting her go out on a social visit or party or anything even going out to market she is going with her brother so still that mindset is still there that no girl has to be protected now here i come to another uh, question that is we keep hearing about so many negative things now why they are keeping them confined to one place or taking care protecting them rape sati system dowry that's what is your view on that oh uh so so let's let's take them one by one okay uh, and obviously i mean first of all uh, i think anybody with you know any degree of sanity will will uh, uh totally accept that these are all heinous crimes that that uh, have absolutely uh, you know neither justification nor any place in civilized society right so that's that's obvious having said that let us put things in context and i i keep going back to the uh, not the fact whether rape is good or bad or i'm using rape as an example i'll come to the others also but whether it is fair to paint india as a particularly evil environment for women okay so, uh, so let me just put that in context okay uh, which are the top 3 countries consistently that figure uh, uh, as the countries uh, with the highest rape statistics you think i can tell you it is not india it is south africa it is lesotho right and it is uh, botswana okay uh india is is not even in the top 10 by the way okay uh not that that excuses anything i'm just i'm just addressing the point of you know uh, uh, somehow painting india as this particularly a uh, uh, bad environment i'm not i'm not suggesting rape is bad that is obviously you know a ridiculous thing to say in the us there is a rate of rape every 1 to 2 minutes in the us yeah yes yeah. right in 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 in, in uk every year 80 80000 women get raped in the uk right sweden is one of the top 10 countries in that list right so my point is you know let's put things in context okay uh, yes it is a it is it is it is a problem that needs to be addressed no question about it nobody uh, is denying that uh, and and really uh, uh, how we going to do this we, we all have to come together we are doing it uh, there is this this tendency again to uh, and this is you know we are anthropologically built all of us to focus on the negative right uh we don't look at the number of women who are traveling overseas on their own who are achieving remarkable feats of achievement in every way remarkable feats you know uh, who are traveling adventure sport you know uh, scientists doctors pilots astronauts you name it right uh somehow that is drowned out in this thing of you know and somebody even sort of gave us the dubious distinction of being the rape capital of the world i mean guys let's you know okay let's look at another one sati okay there is this you know so let's let's look at sati as another one okay again nobody uh, is defending anything right so first of all how did sati come about okay there was this thing of you know uh, 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 husband and wife being together for seven lives and so on so when the husband passes on the wife also decides 
I understand, and I'm, I'm honestly not an expert on this, but I understand that uh, at least in the initial stage, it stages, it was something that was voluntary, right? That that uh, uh, the wife chose to go with the husband because that was whatever. I'm not going to comment on that, but that was at least the theory. Okay. By the way, uh, uh, there are other parts of the world. Uh, I, I, if you've gone to China, you will see that you know uh, uh, the king used to choose the many wives that he would want to you know uh, get buried with him when he passed on. Uh, okay, so so it's it's not unique to India uh, by by any means. But let's let's park that. Okay. So so there is there is that sati. Okay. Did that get corrupted and misused at a certain point in time? Absolutely. I think that 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 there seems to be enough evidence that at some point in time the voluntary aspect became converted into some sort of a forcible thing, and people, uh, for all sorts of nefarious reasons, decided to enforce this on on women. Okay, that's one side. Uh, that then gets somehow conflated with the concept of johar, which is a totally different thing, right? Jor is people is, is women who, uh, by the way, who I salute, uh, who 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 decided to uh, take their lives because they felt that they would want to preserve their honor against the Islamic invaders. Okay, this was completely voluntary, right? Done out of a sense of honor. Okay, and like I said, I I, I really salute salute their bravery and their courage. Let's park that. From 1943 to 1987, there have been 30 cases of dowry deaths. Of, of sorry, of of uh, uh, um, sati reported. 30, 30. Okay. In 1943, the population of India was 400 million. So 30 in 400 million. Okay. Since 1987, there have been zero cases of sati reported. Roop Kanwar was the last one in 1987. So, in the last eight years, there have been 30 cases of Sati report. Just contextualizing things for you. Okay. How many mass shootings have there been in the US? 606 in one year alone, last year. 130 in this year already. Mass shootings. Okay. Putting things in context. Dowry death. Okay. We had uh, in 2000, about 10 years ago, 2010, 11, whatever, 8,500 dowry deaths. Okay. Again, totally inexcusable. But in the context of a population of 1.28 billion, which is what it was at 1.2528 billion, I, I, I mean, the, the decimal goes, you know, into the six or seven digits. Okay. Uh, that number has been steadily declining also. It is right, right now around 6,800. Last, I think, 2021 was 6,800. Yeah. When the population was 1.4 million. So, numbers have been going down. by It's gone down by over 20%, the actual deaths. The uh, number of, uh, uh, the, the population base has been going up by about 10% in that period. Right? So, as a percentage of the population, that number is even smaller. I'm not, I'm not defending dowry deaths of okay. But again, dowry deaths in the context of murder. How many murders happen elsewhere in the world? Why is India being singled out as this somehow culturally evil place that permits dowry deaths when there are mass shootings and there are murders and there are, you know, so, so uh, unless we are saying that somehow, you know, killing somebody for money is better uh, uh, if it is not dowry. Uh, but if it is dowry, then it is somehow worse. Right? So, so I, I mean, I don't get the logic here. Right? Uh, same thing for things like, you know, female uh, infanticide. Absolutely, I think it is a problem. I, 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 I think it is something that is unconscionable. The, you know, the, the, the sex ratio in India is, is among, the, among the worst. Right? I think uh, 112 or something. Uh, don't hold me to this, but something something like that. Uh, 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 while it should be around 104, 5, I think it's 112, something in that way. Hi, anyway. Okay. Uh, do we need to fix this? Obviously, some of the reasons are what you mentioned. You know, there is this. So there is there is a sort of a cultural 
or thing about you know preference for men uh, or, or or boy child because you know there is this thing about you know they can do the shraad and all that uh, next whatever uh, uh, thing which which girls apparently are not supposed to do uh, and of course there is the economic side right uh, again by the way not not uh, one unique to india uh, uh, china has actually a higher Uh, sex ratio uh, uh, than, than we do. Pakistan uh, has higher, but uh, but uh, yeah, uh, it's still high. I'm not justifying that because of that. Okay. Uh, do we need to fix this? Absolutely. There is there are laws, right? Uh, uh, that that uh, are in place for a long time. That that uh, prevents uh, or, or are designed to prevent these things from happening. So a lot of what happens is illegal. so you can say that at a societal level we have chosen uh, that this is not okay but somehow there are still you know aberrations and deviations within the system that are allowing this to happen okay uh, certainly needs to be fixed it is and again it is getting fixed i mean yes there are still uh, 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 you know express preferences in in some societies uh, or some parts of society for uh, uh, the boy child over the girl but i mean Just look around. Do how many? I mean, I'm not aware of people who, who you know, uh, and across, frankly, uh, economic strata, uh, who have opted to, you know, uh, uh, go in for female infanticide because they wanted. I'm I'm aware of people who had many children because they wanted wanted a boy, uh, uh, but I I'm not aware of that many people who actually, you know, aborted, uh, 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 you know, uh, their fetuses because of that. Not not saying that that doesn't happen. The, the statistics are, are are you know against me on that one. But I also want to you know open up this discussion a little bit further. You know, uh, I don't know if you if you follow these debates uh, around the world on on abortion rights and how you know my body my rights kind of uh, movements that are happening elsewhere. You know, uh, there was the Roe versus Wade decision that happened in the Supreme Court in the U.S. Which was a big factor in the midterm elections. It was considered important enough, right, to be a factor in the U.S. election, right, for the women having the right to abort their babies, right. This is the exact thing. So, are we saying that it is somehow worse if you, uh, uh, you know, abort the baby if it is female, but it is okay if you abort the baby regardless of whether it is male or female? i'm not excusing one or the other i'm just saying that somehow singling out a piece of this to suit your own narrative to me feels very disingenuous and very you know double standards right either you say that you know uh, uh, abortions are are not right and therefore you know you should you know uh, apply apply that judiciously or uh, uh, you, uh, you know uh, you move in the other direction the other direction to me makes no sense but again singling out a country and painting it with a certain narrative right uh, uh, while the rest of the world actually proposes the exact same narrative and holds it up as uh, you know a, a, a sign of independence and so on and, and modernity while the same thing applied in another context is seen as something that is somehow backward this doesn't make sense to me here i would say something that these two are different things uh, for uh, female infanticide and abortion by their own will okay these two are different things somebody here on the chat also wrote about it so these two are totally different female infanticide is more prevalent where uh, they want a boy child and uh, another thing is abortion by will that is different issue when a mother is single mother or uh, there are different uh, uh, situation where they are caught up then they need to abort uh, the child where uh, they are not uh, are capable of that and all that i don't think anybody would oppose that. i think that's just silly if you, if there is yeah. a medical situation if somebody uh, you know is unable to carry the pregnancy to term because that would endanger the life of the mother or the child yeah. okay then i think yeah. that's 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 obvious that but i'm not convinced that the entire debate is about that i mean yeah. least, uh, in the us somehow uh, uh, everybody is getting you know pregnant uh, uh, and aborting uh, only because they have you know medical conditions that is not true 
That's my so uh, there is there as we will come to the indian scenario so uh, indian scenario also something like this is there but there is no right to abort there is a legal law that you can't abort in any way even uh, you know if the child has uh, some uh, problem also then also they are not supposed to abort unless and until it is very necessary and they have to get the legal permission to get the abortion done now here again i would say there are unreported abortions of this female fetuses. And there are, this is like growing business that if you have a female child. Now here, the mindset of family, and especially the male uh, population, they are influencing the women. What do you say about this? So obviously, uh, you're right that uh, there must be happening. Otherwise, why would we have the sex ratio so lopsided? Yes. Right? Um, because nature doesn't uh, uh, operate like this, right? The normal sex ratio is supposed to be, I think, around 950 females to 1,000 males or whatever it is. So 103, 104 type uh, 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 males per female. We have 112. So obviously, you know, uh, uh, there is uh, female infanticide must be happening, right? So, so you're right. It is going on. Uh, how do you get this? I'm not sure, by the way, that uh, the point that you made about it is always at the instance of the of the male uh, uh, member uh, that the abortion takes place. I mean, uh, I think it is a little bit more complex than that. I mean, I, I frankly, uh, uh, I, I've seen a, a lot of uh, uh, women also have a strong preference for a boy child uh, than the girl child. So I, I'm, I'm not entirely convinced that there's a male problem. It is a society problem. I, 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 okay, because both both are colored by the same sort of uh, you know perceptions about what yes. is and so on. Okay, uh, so so there is there is that. Uh, and yes, of course we need. To, and I can only hope honestly that this is this is a journey that we are on, which is moving in the right direction. Because as more and more women uh, achieve more and more in terms of their uh, academic accomplishments in terms of their social profile, in terms of their economic contribution, their economic independence, their ability to support the wider ecosystem. The more that happens, the more the sort of unjustified but still present stigma of being female goes away. Right? So I think it is a process. I mean, if uh, uh, if there are more women that basically allow themselves to be, you know, uh, 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 considered inferior because they don't have the push or the desire. And, and by the way, this is, and I'm sure you're closer to the ground there, so you will probably, you know, experience it more. Uh, there are women in, in, in economically, uh, you know, a secure strata of society that contribute zero uh, to, to society. Right? They're, all they do is consume. I agree with you. So if there are no role models, if there are no people to look up to either, I mean, either by the men or by the women, right? Uh, and this includes people who have the opportunity and the ability to do it, but choose not to, right? Then how does this work? We have to take, all of us have to take responsibility. Yeah, I would like to say about my personal experience also. Um, uh, one of my, uh, you can say uh, a person who is a doctor. Now, the doctor himself took decision to, uh, you know, with his own contacts and everything, he took this uh, decision to, okay, this uh, family doesn't need a female child, he should have a male child. And he, uh, you know, uh, made such a, uh, you know, situation to abort the female child. So here, yeah, no, here it happened. So okay. in many places it happens. Okay, mm -hmm. a doctor himself is in his own family. He will, you know, influence the other family or a brother or sister or anyone. Okay, you should have two children. Okay, one should be boy and one should be yes. the girl. Okay, yes. 
so uh, this will be your complete family that with that mindset also people are doing this female infanticide not the boy child but female in, if if a female is there female fetus will be aborted mm. this mm. has happened many a times and this this also depends on the society on the value system how they are uh, treated treated and teached and uh, how they are groomed in the society in the family where they belong to even if they are educated also that mindset will be there no female yeah. should be aborted and male should be there mm. okay so this thing is not only that middle or higher strata it is with the educated families also and those who are doctors also they are also doing it i think yeah. the, i think the, i think there is data that actually it is more in, yes in, in economically better of society yes But less apparently in the in the which is which to me initially was counterintuitive but that's what the data is showing that data is showing and plus data is unreported also they are under reporting all yeah. these things because these are uh, people who will be reporting to the authorities and they are not reporting it yeah. similarly in the villages or in uh, uh, small towns data is not reported hmm. they are doing in multiple murders of little children hmm. and mm. when they are born also suppose they don't uh, get the uh, ultrasound done and they don't uh, get to know the sex also when the child is born they will feed that uh, uh, one uh, plant uh, milk and mm. the child will die or something like that i think this is yes it is very prevalent in india mm. and we call it tatura or something i don't remember the name yeah. yes think... the milk of that plant they will feed to the little newborn child and the child will die most of the time it happens in the villages in the uh, small town where mm. uh, uh, you know they don't have the facility to know the what the fetus uh, sex is mm. so this is a very uh, sad situation and plus rape of children girl child rape of even um, uh, in a uh, like big towns also they will just uh, all the uh, rich uh, rich guys who have uh, cars and all they will pull in the girls who are walking alone and they will rape the uh, the mm. girls and mm. throw them on the road mm. and they will even in villages also this is happening yeah. they will yeah. pull them in the uh, you know in the field and they will rape mm. now here education matters despite education then also they are doing it why revenge why they have been shunned by one one girl that i don't know to marry you and they will take it on to other girls mm. or the same girl what mm. do you have to say on this no look i think and this is not just here but globally rape is not about sex right it is about yes. power it is about dominating and you know yes. all these other things right uh, um, otherwise how I mean, how do you explain you know uh, kids being raped or sometimes old women being raped and all that it has nothing to do with sexual desire yes right it, it is uh, you know uh, all sorts of other other problems uh, so and again i just go back to my earlier point there is zero reason uh, 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 to to sort of justify this okay uh, it, there cannot be it, 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 it it's one of the most heinous things you can do right uh so my my sort of uh, uh, argument is not about whether rape is justified or not i mean that's a stupid thing to say uh, my 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 argument is somehow uh, painting india as this one country that has this problem uh, while the rest of the world is somehow lily white i think that's my 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 sort of uh, thing here that does no, not this- mean not improve ourselves absolutely no abhi we i mean uh, 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 we, we have to uh, uh, you know get rid of this regardless of what's happening elsewhere uh, so so uh, i would i parts. will interrupt you uh, it was not in indian context it was global context so everywhere it is happening nahi main aapka nahi i'm not talking about you but i'm saying in general that is the narrative that yeah, it is globally this is happening yeah yeah no no you are talking about i think that's my point it's it, it's global i mean now you see you know uh, uh, i mean we i don't know how uh, you know you you read about these you know the rape of nanking and and and, and what happened uh, in every war now what is happening in you know in the war uh, between russia and ukraine yes uh, 
it everywhere it is everywhere it is everywhere so uh, let's uh, uh, take this aside because this is a little negative so mm. we come to uh, how do you see india and how do you see globally women are getting you know more uh, higher status are they respected more are they doing well how do you perceive now women in global scenario and if you have any suggestion how to improve their status so we would like to have your viewpoint on this also fair enough so look i think uh, in terms of um, value systems or belief systems as regarding whether uh, women and men should have the same rights uh, whether they should have the same opportunities whether they should be treated uh, equally i think most civilized societies are at least at least on the surface i don't think anybody disagrees with that i mean there was a time not that long ago and i've i've given you some examples of how you know in so called you know Uh, developed economies and societies women did not have the right to vote right uh, 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 you know uh, uh, they, they, they sometimes didn't have property rights they, they had you know in the judicial process sometimes uh, the you know the uh, the witness of a woman uh, was considered inferior to the witness of a man right uh, so i think those things are slowly but definitely going on Uh, i think more and more uh, 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 you see i mean uh, you have legendary you know uh, judicial figures in the us now that you know, uh, which is the the, the 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 lady who recently passed through by them so uh, uh, i think nobody uh, uh, who is uh, sort of in line with current thinking would uh, make the i mean i'm keeping aside one or two countries here but Uh, uh that that would take the view that women uh, uh should not be treated as equals i think that's just uh, uh, very very uh, uh uh last century type thinking which only one or two countries still have uh, or or that they should be forced to do things or whatever now that is the official position are we there yet i don't think so okay now there are and there are two parts to this right uh and this is okay this is very this is i don't have data to do this this is simply you know my point of view so please you know uh, take it in that spirit uh there is in the uh, in some parts of the world particularly the west but i think increasingly uh, more global there is the sense that uh equality means men and women have to do the exact same things i am not convinced that that is the best outcome for society right because and this is just the experience of looking uh, at at people and and dealing with people for all these years there are certain things that women are better at and there are certain things that somehow men just naturally gravitate towards that doesn't make one better or worse right so somehow to expect honestly i mean uh, uh, and i'll give you a, uh, not to not to sort of you know uh, uh, uh you know paint one as as superior or inferior but i really don't think most men can run a household as well as a woman can this is not a judgement call this is this is a fact i mean I, I, men are just not good at these things right uh that does not mean we should disrespect the person who is running the household right somehow that has happened that can be changed and that i think is somehow getting changed uh but that is a you know a fact i think i think for instance this so called maternal instinct women are just better at bringing up kids men even if they want to most of the time somehow are not that good at these things there are things that we have i hope we are good at but but i think there are things that frankly you know women do better okay uh, uh i think the problem is somehow uh not attaching value to that or not giving it the due respect because of economic pressure or economic preferences right i mean i'm giving my you know 
own example uh, as you know uh, something that we can we can discuss my my father used to work in the life insurance corporation my mother has been a housewife all this life right? you see that there was never any doubt in anybody's mind including my father's who ran the house right uh, there were certain things that my mother uh, was not good at is still not good at you know uh, you know dealing with uh, uh, let's say investments for instance okay uh, could that be improved absolutely and i think today's women are definitely getting much better at that i mean some of my friends are serious bankers i mean we have debate we have discussions we go you know, uh, 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 like i said so can those things be improved yes but i don't think there is any pressure uh, uh, unless we choose to take it upon ourselves to be equal in all respects why do we have to be if we are good at something why don't we just pursue that and be fantastic at that that doesn't mean that you you know give away your respect or you give away your power over society or anything no that's not true. i don't think that's true i would like to say something about this hmm. first of all now things are changing and uh, children are in a nuclear family so there will be boys also and girls also somewhere there will be only boys and somewhere there will be only girls now boys are also taught to cook to take care of everything to uh, take care of the household work girls here they are also taught to go outside and work okay so they are balancing the society in this way that they are equal to each other it's not about that they one of them can take care of the kids but they are both trained to take care of the kids they are both trained to take care of the household so this is the changing scenario which is happening nowadays so i see my daughters i have two daughters both of them are trained in such a way that they can take care of both the thing outside work also and inside work also household chores also they can take care of the child also and they can take care of the outside thing also earning the money and bringing in the money taking care of the office work also and taking care of the household work similarly boys are also trained like that uh, my uh, son in law he knows how to cook he knows how to take care of the household chores and i hope uh, in future also he will be able to take care of the child also so nowadays things are changing now it is modern concept which is coming forward and which should be encouraged that both boy and girl are equal and both are doing the things together and taking the role of each other so both in in one person whether it's a boy or girl both have female and male qualities so they are balancing and now they are realizing i fully agree i'm not i'm not uh, absolutely i think i don't, I don't i'm not uh, suggesting that both should not be given the exact same opportunity or both should not uh, have the same ability uh but i'll give an example okay uh, what i mean is it is so so you cannot i, I think what you're saying and I, i i fully agree is that somehow to say that you know the responsibility of running the house is the woman's uh, and and the responsibility of doing external stuff is the man's i don't think that's true at all i think that i, I don't think it was true except for a short period of time in between look there you know if you look at how this thing has evolved you know once once uh, human society settled down right one from hunter gatherers to they became agriculturists right so you had to have somebody who had to go out into the fields and so that you know whatever you know plant the seeds do whatever stuff outside uh, and you had to at the same time that fellow had to eat so somebody had to you know do the cooking and you know whatever right yeah. so th- there and between the two because of the the sort of uh, the, the physical strength etc that the average man has over over the woman the sort of physically heavy job went on to the man the the sort of you know less or at least supposedly that i don't think it is less but in in, in some ways it is less i guess in terms of you know power or whatever uh, 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 went to the woman right over time what happened was the the external work is what got the economic importance and the value and somehow the economic importance and value of the household work became less and less and that is what has then eventually led to this divide of oh, house housewife or you know whatever right and you know she can work 
I think that's going away. You're absolutely right. And I, I, I'm very glad that that's going away. I mean, frankly, I'm, I'm, I'm terrible at cooking and I, I really feel very bad about it. Because I, I wish I could, you know, cook better, but uh, I can't. Uh, uh, but, uh, so, so the responsibility and so on, I think uh, uh, needs to be divided. The abilities, uh, capability to manage all aspects of each other's life. So, I mean, again, I'm looking at my friend circle. Uh, I see constantly, you know, uh, the husband and wife discussing everything from what what to eat today, to where to invest in, to you know, uh, to to you know, where to uh, to to sort of plan for for retirement. Everything is done together. Yeah. Uh, and and both have very sensible inputs. Uh, both look to each other for confirmation or understanding of different aspects and all that. Hey. So so I, absolutely, I don't. I'm so I'm, that's not what I'm, I'm I'm saying. I'm saying, despite all of this, I think. More women, and again, this I'm not. I don't want to sort of uh, do a very broad brush. So more women will gravitate towards, uh, let's say, um, poetry or art or you know, uh, uh, maybe even music to some extent, etc. By and large, and more men will gravitate towards sport. Right. This is just how we are built. That doesn't make one better or worse. I think, and like I said, I mean, I have female friends who are internationally recognized artists, right? Or, 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 or published authors, right? So, so I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm just saying there are natural sort of, uh, uh, I guess, drives within each of us uh, that rather than trying to say this should be like this or this should be like that, we should allow those to flower in their own way. Uh, and, and frankly, if you know uh, that I also have male friends who are internationally recognized artists, so I'm not I'm not saying one is the other. Uh, if somebody is very good, but that's not the norm. There aren't that many uh, uh, people who are uh, on one side uh, uh, of this than than the other. So there are more people, more ladies who are you know good at art and things like that in general. Yeah, you know, home decor, fashion, etc. Than than men are, right? Uh, that's just how, how you know they're built. Okay, so uh, I have uh, just uh, a beautiful, I would say, beautiful and very, uh, you know, good discussion with about the role of women uh, mm -hmm. in present scenario and past and present and of course in future also. What do you have a message for women and men? Of course, both. Yes, yes. So look, I'm, 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 I'm. Uh, as I said, I'm a proud Indian, and I'm, um, I guess, uh, 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 very optimistic uh, in my outlook. Uh, I, I, I dream of uh, an India that uh, the world looks up to with reverence, uh, of an India that we can all be, you know, proud of. Uh, and in the context of this discussion, you know, I, I, I so I told you right about. Um, my my niece's daughter, she's thirteen years old. Okay, uh, so she she uh, is is uh, uh, top of her class. She at the same time can recite the Hanuman Chalisa by heart, right? And she can beat the crap out of uh, anybody who messes with her because she's a black belt in karate. Oh wow! Okay, this is the India I want to see. Yes. Right. That is that is my hope and my dream that uh, uh, we will get there one day. I think we are getting there one step at a time. We are already working on it. Yes. Get there. Yeah. So uh, thank you very much uh, for a beautiful and lovely uh, discussion about the uh, uh, okay. status of women over here in India and globally also. And we have discussed a lot of uh, things. Uh, whether it is uh, to uh, towards the positive or negative end, but uh, we have discussed very very uh, you know in depth study of women and uh, uh, their uh, achievements and their uh, how they have grown over the past years also, and we have touched the different aspects of uh, women how they are suffering and how they are growing and how they are overcoming it.
so this is very very beautiful uh, uh, discussion and thank you very much and i am uh, really if anyone of our audience have any question they can uh, they are uh, uh, most welcome to ask uh, mr vishwaji to answer okay. these questions if you have any questions please they can ask uh, hi anupurji uh, thank you for uh, opening the discussion and uh, mr vishwaji it was really nice uh, hearing you but at the same time i just feel like um, what about the mindset of the men like uh, even the boys and girls both you know like they look at their parents how they are behaving in the um, at home and i just feel it's more like it's an iceberg syndrome everything looks nice on the surface and uh, the parents seems you know like um, like the roles you know like Yeah, like both of them, like nowadays they are, you know, like taking care of things. But still, I think there's much which cannot be seen, you know, like um, which is under the surface. Like the men, you know, like how uh, are they ready? Are they ready to accept women excelling? You know. So look, I think um, any time and giving them opportunities, you know, at. so any time power shifts in any equation the person who has the power resists that shift this is in any context not just yeah. in context but in any context right so if you come from the position that uh, the men have the power and 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 uh, are therefore resisting that shift i think that's that's entirely likely but do you see uh, the same behavior among your peers that you see in your parents no because there in in my parents it was roles were you know like divided okay the men was more you know like even now when i see my parents are so old my father is in 90s but still you know he'll be like yeah he is you know like physically you know like he can't is not even like strong but he will like to assert you know Uh, about everything you know and my mom will take it you know but nowadays i we, if we something we have to get into that same we will not be able to you know like but even that subtle you know like there is the men have you know like when i see around you know like um, even with like as couples like my husband we like we are we call ourselves you know world or whatever you know like <laughs> but still you know there is the uh, there is a very delicate this thing is there where the men feel ki like okay whatever they are saying that's the right thing you know like it's not like the my way or highway not that kind but still you know that that out of 10 it, they feel you know okay that at least 8 or 9 you know that important should be given you know to what they are saying you know so that subtle is it there question again so so do you so on that same 1.1 to 10 scale uh, do you see a shift between your father and your husband Yeah, there's there's a big swing. Like there's, I mean, I I'll call it a swing. You know, it's not even a like shift. Yeah, because I think we as women are becoming more assertive. It's not what I'm saying is about the men. You know, like they the the shift has come from the ladies. You know, they are becoming more assertive. How does it? If they don't, I I feel that. You know, it's not coming from the. Of course, the men are also becoming. You know, because it's how we have brought up. Like I have got two boys. and they have seen me you know like and my husband you know like how my husband treats you know that's what i'm saying it's about what they see at home and both my boys really i mean like i'll say because as a mother i'll say okay they are they are nice guys but that's what i'm saying the it the change has to come also from the men but i don't see it coming so fast you know like it's it's more about the women you know like who are becoming like who are trying to assert and do things you know them they becoming they are you know like i think all of the women you know even like when we're talking about the villages and all only the people like only the girls are going to rebel they will be able to you know like go forward i like i don't know how much society will give them the opportunity then so that's the point right which is the point that i made right at the beginning right when when power is shifting the shift happens not from the person who has the power but the person who's taking the power yeah yeah right? this is everywhere history is yeah. like this right? yeah exactly so the responsibility for progress lies with the woman unfortunately that's the, the, not in this case because you are you are the one who's kind of coming from the position of weakness to sort of capturing that position of strength right having said that i think what is heartening to me is exactly and you confirm that is that there is progress 
So yeah. the relationship between and again, please, you know, don't take it personally. This is this is everywhere. The relationship between your father and your mother is different from the relationship between your husband and your and yourself, and the relationship that your kids, your son will have with their wives. Yeah. Right? If you are trying to change the system that's been around for one thousand years. Will, are you not going to give it a, even a hundred years? Then it will be gone, right? Yeah, Arni, that is there. That is there. I'm not saying that. I'm not denying that. Ki, like, of course, know, everything takes know. time. But what I, I say know. is that at grassroots level, I think every family, you know, like, it's not only teaching our girls, you know, to be more assertive. At the same time, that the care has to be taken to groom the boys properly. No, no, absolutely, absolutely. What the hey? But I think uh, because absolutely. half the time it is that we are mentoring the girls. You know, we are mentoring. You know, like look, the girls have to behave like this, or they have to be assertive, or they have to be, you know, like uh, whatever, like more, you know, like um, demure, you know, like that kind of things. But I feel uh, the grooming of the men is lacking. The parents have to groom and teach their boys to be, you know, like uh, that. That change has to come, you know. Like I, I feel that. I mean, like I'm very strong about feel very strongly about uh, this thing because half the time the ladies of the house, like I think, because I'm also one of them, both parents have to see that they, uh, they have to respect women and they have to allow the women to have that those opportunities. You know. But they think, yeah, and this is not just in this context. But like I said, I keep going back to the same thing. Somebody who has something will not give it up unless the other party takes it. You can. The only then there are two ways to take it. You can take it over time gently, right, and keep society intact, or you can take it forcibly, like we have seen revolutions that have happened all over the world, right? Whether it is the American War of Independence, whether it is no, it's not forcibly. It's always <laughs> the society has to evolve. You know, like. That we is we want to see it during our lifetime. It's not that you know, like after, like when we are gone, of course, like. But we have to, you know, like uh, uh, put that, you know, like uh, stepping stone. You know, like we have to start somewhere, you know, and we have to keep on building that. I think we are saying the same thing. The point is, all I'm saying is, at the end of the day, the beneficiary is the one who has to make the first step. This is just how, this is nature. This is life, yeah. right? That does not mean that other party will not come, uh, will not come up and 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 sort of make that adjustment. All the women's rights that have happened, how have they happened all over the world? Just look at history, everywhere around, not just in India, everywhere. Women's suffrage, how did it come? People got onto the street and said, "We wanted this." Uh, 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 civil rights, how did it come? Right? Revolutions, how did it come? French Revolution, Russian Revolution. U.S. War of Independence, Indian War of Independence. How that happened? Did the Brits say, "Ki chalo, bhai, tum le lo"? Ham to, you know, this is the fair thing to do. You know, we we love you. We are we are good people. Please take power and we'll go away. Asa hua? Nahi hua na? Kabi nahi hota hai? Nee, that is fine. I mean, like we don't need, you know, like that. That's something different. Yeah, I understand what you are trying to say. What you are saying, that's absolutely fine. From the person who feels aggrieved. Yeah, you know, because that's the only one who's going to drive it. If you think that somehow there will be enlightenment happening, वो तो अलग लेवल है, वो तो फिर रिश्व हो जाएगा, हो जाएगा. So <laughs> entire entire male population <laughs> cannot get enlightened. ऐसा तो नहीं होगा. Right. So what is the other way? Hey, so 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 good discussion of uh, Mrs. Jingra. Okay. Now uh, I would like. Uh, Mrs. Ashmi, uh, uh, Meena ji, would you like to say something? Yes. 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 Sure. Yeah. Uh, hello. Yeah. Yes. Namaste. Uh, I I know you through Bina Biswa. She is a close friend of mine, Kanita and Bina. That's how she shared your number and I shared with Shabana ji. Bina was an example of the sort of people who are making a difference, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've known yeah. her for forty something years, right? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Middle class background. And look at her now. She's you know she's a published author. She runs her own business. You know she did a yes, publishing company. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. But you know, Mr. Das Gupta, I'll still say I meet with many people, and I'm very extrovert personality, and I have traveled overseas for many many years, and I come back here. We are talking about elite and educated class, and people are making a. We see the perceptible change. 
But in reality, when I work with some people who are not so fortunate, I find out women have no say. Women have, they are in a very, very messy situation when I talk to them. I feel helpless because nothing more I can do. Mm. So, you know, like we, since we are educated and we are blessed to be in good family in laws and they all are supportive and I could do so much of things like good jobs and businesses and everything. But again, I repeat, we are talking about very few people and we are not saying the change will come overnight. We all are aware of that. But, you know, like there is so much of disparity that it will, when you say 100 years, no, I, I see more than 100 years. And women yeah, empowerment, so, 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 unless a lady a woman bit, is ready. Optimistic because, you know, change doesn't happen linearly. Change happens like this, like this, and then it happens like this. It's a long way to go. As much yeah, positive and optimistic I, I, I am. And I'm okay it will take, but usually if you look at pattern of change in anything, na, uh, it's like moving a train. Pehle bahut takka laga laga hai. Inertia, yeah. Right. Once you get past the inertia and it gathers momentum, then that speed is is, is very rapid. I am an optimist. I think I think that that speed will will gather momentum. And I, I can I can see that also because you know India is a young country. I mean you know so so uh, you know uh, uh, we have the opportunity uh, to change mindsets mind sets uh, uh, much more easily than some older countries, uh, you know, where, you know, uh, whatever entrenched values are, 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 are sort of much more difficult to dislodge. If you, I mean, we have a 25 average age of India is 26 years old, 27 years old, right? Uh, uh, these kids presumably are getting brought up in a totally different environment than, than you know, people like you and I were, right? Uh, and, and 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 therefore their ability to a uh, uh, accept a new paradigm a new way of looking at life is much higher and I, 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 uh, uh, don't get me wrong i'm not i'm not trivializing this i'm not saying this is an easy problem it it never is no social problem is easy right uh, uh, despite okay. so despite revolutions uh, uh, I don't think anybody is going to pretend that you know uh, American society became perfect, or French society became perfect, or Russian society became perfect. But, but here, uh, I, Mr. Bisuda, I totally agree with you. But I, I feel so thankful that I'm born in India, because if I see around the world, I think Indian women are in much, much better condition. You see Iran, you see Iraq, you see anywhere. Yeah. That way, I always feel you know, I'm honest. blessed, blessed to be born in India. So there we do not have it. It was just like um, out of sheer this thing that we were discussing yeah, that no. how we can improve further. Yeah, but definitely, you know, like when we see around, we even are in a much better condition. Now, Anna, even this kind of conversation you cannot have. Uh, yeah, exactly. So that's that, that's truly, I mean, that's here. I totally agree with you that we are in a, like uh, if we compare with the world, I think we are, I feel we are better you know, like than That's any any saying. of the this thing developed most developed country. Like even the US, I think we, we, we are, are better. Be. I, I don't think anybody is saying that. I don't think we are where we have to be. My point from the beginning was, was that we are not as badly off compared to the rest of the world. As we are not bad at all. Country. There, I totally agree with you. We are not bad at all. I think we are right on top. I think even better than US because where you know, like the right right to abortion. We here we it is. It's legal, you know. The uh, absolutely anyone can go and get it if they don't want, you know. Like, so we are at a much better this thing. But yeah, you know, like it's always there. Like it's just out of sheer this thing, like uh, that we can still be better, you know. Like, of but I'm there when we see, you know, we will get better. Yeah, exactly. And, and I, I really think that a lot of the reason why we will get better is because of the women. Because they are making these changes. But you tell me, 10 years ago, okay, 10 years ago, not even that much longer, 10 years ago, would you have expected Indian sports women to be such a dominant force in the world? No, because I think it's a, uh, I will say that it's because of the government inputs also. Of because course. Uh, no, no, that no. that That's society, no. of course, and the government is giving quite a push, you know. So rather than the top uh, level also, you know, it's not only bottom. I mean, both these, ways, you know, bottom up and top you know, down, you know, know, both, yeah. You know, all this hoo-ha about NASA and this, that and the other, right? These women, you look at them on the street, you will think, ye to kya hai, nahi hai. 
right yeah very very simple looking women coming in sarees you know uh, eating you know tight sada men you know whatever yeah exactly exactly how was she is building missiles yeah the, see there's they there like of course this was like we digress from like uh, your uh, this thing conversation because then we're comparing of course i feel ki indian women are incomparable we are in a better situation than anyone you know there uh, there's no this thing we are also much more capable i feel seriously i'm not, i'm not saying this because i've got all you ladies in front of me i i really think so you know definitely yes. will we we'll like to believe that but i feel women all over they have you know this again you know like how the society you know like um, uh has helped them in in why you know, because it's like it's symbiotic you know i always feel that men and women you know like both have to be you know like they say behind every successful man there is a woman but at the same time after every successful woman there is a man behind or the entire family is there you know? that is the idea so it's a symbiotic relationship you know the only the society grows then you know? yeah. we are i mean i think uh, of course Yes. that balance is exactly what we we have to strive for and i think we will i hope we will get there i am yeah, thank you so much thank you yeah yeah so great uh, yes anyone else who have yeah ashmi ji please uh, meena ji you want to say something you are on mute i was just saying thank you before i leave <laughs> yeah hello can i say something Sure. Yes, yes, please, please, Sanju. Please. Hello, Pooji. How yes. are you? I'm good. Uh, yeah. I just came late into the discussion, so I just entered now, and uh, I just want wondered, you know, like uh, this ongoing discussion. What, what, what exactly would you mean by equality between men and women? I uh, mean, because we are strictly all of us are in unequal human beings. We all have different, uh, you know, strengths and weaknesses. So. someone or the other might dominate in the uh, equation power equation of running the family so what 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 can be done what you know it can be possible that women also are far yeah, ahead and uh, are yeah. <clears throat> are running businesses and the man is behind of course so you know uh, uh, there is a quote from osho that i i i uh, resonate to very much uh you know he, he said we are not equal we are unique yeah we are all unique right uh, and we just have to accept the fact that we are all unique right uh, and i i mean i i couldn't agree more with you that that uh, that uh, uh this this sort of mythical concept of equality is a little bit misplaced uh equality of rights yes equality of opportunity yes uh, equality of outcome up to you see i think it's a very straightforward thing about why today is uh, you know why men are supposed to be a little more uh, ahead because in the olden days in years past you know people had to rely on things like strength and power and things like that so men had that Uh, yes, was slightly was, more powerful than the other part of the discussion exactly and those sort of things so the men were you had <coughs> consequently had the upper hand in these things so that has taken a long time to evolve and as life goes on as uh, we have less dependence on physical attributes and more on things like communication you find you know if you go to an hr uh, uh, you know office and uh, you find a lot more women there than men exactly simply because they are be- probably better at communication uh, so and, and one more thing works out that the way the other is empathy women are more empathetic in general men are not in general i'm, I'm, I'm this is a broad brush statements but women have more empathy than men Uh, so i'm i'm so elated you know uh, by uh, all your uh, discussion uh, about women and uh, of course here again i would like to say we are unique people yeah. we are 
all unique. We are all individual. Every person is unique in their own sense, whether male or female, whether men or women, whether girl or boy. So everyone is unique and they should learn all the, all the tactics of living the life, you know, positively. And that is what our motto is all about in May Win Magic. We are creating mm. magic over here. And uh, that's what we would like to end this uh, uh, discussion because it has uh, passed, I think, so half an hour more. So uh -huh. we just didn't knew how the yeah. time flies. Uh -huh. And uh, it was such a beautiful and, you know, impressive and catching discussion about this burning uh, 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 topic of role of women in global scenario, not only Indian, it is global scenario also. And we would all like to thank you for uh, coming on Maven to give a beautiful discussion about women and praising women also, men also, and creating a you know a, a balance between both of them and showing the correct picture that no, India is not the rape capital or anything. It is a growing capital. It is about women and women are coming from every walk of life and coming up in global scenario also. So I would like to really thank you for uh, uh, opening our eyes, enlightening us about status of women globally. And thank you very much for coming here. And we will invite you again also. So please do come sure. and give us Definitely. your value, uh, impressions and discussion. Thank you very much. Right.